In order to design a compiler, a way of parsing the text of a program is needed. This task is accomplished by a parser, which uses a grammar to create parse trees, which are graphical depictions of grammatical derivations. In order to discuss parse trees, we will need an example grammar to work with. This grammar will include conditional if and if else statements as well as a simple assignment operation and equality test. So in this grammar, a collection of statements is one statement or a statement followed by more statements. A statement is either an assignment statement or an if statement. Assignment is simply setting one identifier equal to another. So something unusual about this grammar is that the use of ID is a terminal. So an identifier is a valid name for a particular programming language. Different languages have different rules for which names are valid identifiers. And we could also define a grammar to generate or recognize valid identifiers. However, the specific identifiers used in this example are not really syntactically relevant. So we will simply use ID to represent a valid identifier. Note that this doesn't mean that the same variable is being referred to in all places. Any occurrence of ID in our sentences could be any arbitrary identifier. So with that bit of confusion out of the way, um, the rest of the grammar says that an if statement is either if and then a Boolean expression, we do a single statement, or if a Boolean expression, then a single statement else another single statement. So this simple grammar does not allow blocks where we do multiple statements inside of our conditional expressions. We're only doing one statement or one statement for the if and one for the else. And then a Boolean expression, once again, keeping things simple, all we can check is equality. So we can ask if one identifier is equal to another identifier. This s syntax has some similarities with Java, but is obviously not as complex. Let's move on and do a derivation using this grammar. So for this grammar, our top level non-terminal is statements. And this has two rules, but we will choose to map this to a statement followed by more statements. And I will once again do a leftmost derivation, so I'll be filling out things from left to right. The next step requires us to replace the statement with something, which will be an assignment operation, including the semicolon. And the only option for assign is to become an ID being set equal to an ID. Now we'll fill in some specific values for those identifiers later, but in this derivation we'll simply represent them as they are represented in the grammar rules themselves. Now we need to expand statements again, and so this time we will simply reduce the list of statements to a single statement and that particular statement will be an if statement, since that's the whole point of this grammar, is to show how if statements work. And we have two options for what the if statement can be. I will choose the more complicated rule, the if else statement. So this gets replaced with if, then a Boolean expression, then we have some statement here, else another statement. Going from left to right, we need to evaluate this Boolean expression. So we will expand that into the only thing it can be, which is an ID equal equal another ID. And now we can expand that statement to an assignment statement. And we can fill out what the assignment statement is. And now we need to expand statement, which will also be an assignment statement. And then finally, here's what the assignment statement looks like. And that is a complete derivation. If we fill in valid identifiers and change the white space here a little bit, then we could turn this final result into the following. So this code snippet matches this final sentence at the bottom, except I've replaced the IDs with valid identifiers. Um, now we could infer some meaning out of this, but really they're just arbitrary. This is a code snippet that looks like it would be valid in a language like Java, where we don't care about the white space. So given this, let's make a parse tree for this same derivation. 
the root of our parse tree will be the same nom terminal that was the start of our derivation. And we will expand it the same way. It can branch out to a single statement and a collection of statements. This statement branches out into the assigned nom terminal and the terminal semicolon. The assign non-terminal branches out into terminals for setting the ID equal to another ID. Now we'll expand the statements. Statements expand to a single statement, which we expanded to an if statement. And then this is a big step because this node in the tree has lots of children. And at this level we have three non-terminals each of which need to be expanded further with their own children. The Boolean expression simply expands to three terminals, id equal equal to id, and each of these statements expands first to an assigned statement and then to the specific set of terminal values id equals id. And there we have it. This is a parse tree for the derivation that we did previously that matches this sentence that is also shown up here. This tree hierarchically describes the sentence that we derived, and this hierarchical structure is useful to a compiler. However, our grammar has a problem. You see, the grammar that we used is actually ambiguous. That means that some sentential forms have more than one distinct parse tree. Here is an example. Now, we can tell from the way I have indented this text what the intended structure is. But for languages that ignore white space, we need a way of disambiguating what this means. Because I could also have indented it like this. So in this second version, the sentence is actually the same. All I have changed is the indentation in the white space. But this makes a question clear. Is this else supposed to be associated with this if statement, or is the else supposed to be associated with this if statement? Only one of these should be correct, otherwise it's unclear what this code is actually doing. Here are two distinct parse trees using our previous grammar that allow for both interpretations. The first parse tree expands statements into a statement into an if statement. There are two options for this if statement, and in this tree that if statement is simply if boolean expression and statement. Then that statement expands to another if statement which has if boolean statement else other statement. This gives us this sort of interpretation because the structure indicates that the entirety of the if-else statement is inside of the first if. The alternative interpretation here, where the inner if is associated with the outer if, but the else is associated with the outer if rather than the inner if, is shown here. Statement expands to a statement, expands to an if statement, and then here we branch out to have the if else statement. So we go straight to the case where there's an else, and then the first statement here becomes an if statement without an else, and then after the else we get an assignment. So we have two distinct parse trees for one sentence, and that is what makes this grammar ambiguous. Now, if a compiler cannot uniquely determine the structure of the code, it will not know what machine code to convert the high-level code into. So let's fix our previous grammar to make it unambiguous. The big problem with our previous grammar was that an if-else statement could have some generic statement in both of these slots, but there was nothing distinguishing these. So we could have repeated if statements nesting under this statement deeper and deeper, which leads to ambiguity. 
Therefore, to fix our grammar, we have to fix this type of if-else statement. We'll start off the same way. Defining a sequence of statements is either one statement or a statement followed by more. What has to change is how we define an individual statement. An individual statement can either be a matched statement or an unmatched statement. These two categories will allow us to assure there's no ambiguity. A match statement can either be a regular assignment statement or an if statement of the following form. So far so good. But what is an unmatched statement? Well, an unmatched statement can only be an if statement. The first option is the one that does not have an else. If a Boolean expression, then a statement. And this can be any type of statement at all. The second option will have an else, yet will still be different from this one. So we see that an unmatched if-else statement can have a matched statement after the if, but only an unmatched statement after the else. We also need to have an assignment and a Boolean expression. Given this grammar, there is only one way to parse the sentence we saw earlier. Here is a flattened out version of that sentence. Now that we see this sentence written out linearly without any of the indentation, it does look a bit unclear what is meant. However, this grammar will allow us to parse it unambiguously. I'm going to create a parse tree for this, but I'm going to draw it in a slightly different way than I did previously. First of all, it's going to be upside down. But besides that, I'm going to do it based off this completed sentence. So for example, I know that this expression here has to be a Boolean expression, and I can map these components to identifiers and to the equality of the Boolean expression. So I end up with the non-terminal Boolean expression right here. I can do the same for the other Boolean expression. The assignment operations are also similarly easy to parse out. With the assignment statements, we can go one step further and parse out the semicolon. Now remember that an assignment is specifically a matched statement. Then we have the rest of the sentence to parse. So how do we do that? Well, if we look, we'll see that we have an if statement followed by a matched else a matched. This is the only else in the whole sentence. And if we look at all of our rules, we see there are two rules that have a terminal value of else. There's this one and this one. However, this rule has a matched followed by an unmatched. That can't possibly go here. So I must be using this rule that has a matched else a matched. Therefore, this whole if else here must be a matched statement. So this matched non-terminal encompasses all of these parts of the sentence. That means at this point, all that is unparsed is this matched non-terminal, this Boolean expression, as well as the terminal parenthesis and the terminal if followed by a parenthesis there. Well, an if Boolean expression followed by a matched but without an else can only correspond to this rule here. Therefore, this whole thing is part of an unmatched. Though note first that this matched actually corresponds to a generic statement. So first we have the generic statement, and then an unmatched encompasses all of that. To parse the rest of the sentence, I'll need to move this up a little bit. But since all we have left is this unmatched, we can see that an unmatched is a statement, and a statement is part of a list of statements and that will allow us to finish off this parse tree. And so now you see that there is only one parse tree for this sentence. I've also shown you now an alternative way 
of writing a parse tree if you already have a sentence written out on the paper in front of you. The nice thing about this parse tree is that its structure indicates the only correct interpretation of the sentence is the one we would typically write with the following indentation right here. In other words, the if else is nested within a single outer if. If I wanted the alternative interpretation in which this else is associated with the outer if rather than the inner if, then in a language like Java, we would need to use curly braces. However, the ability to have multiple statements in curly braces is not part of the simple grammar I've defined here.